What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show tonight ish kind of thing. Still have zero idea about the feel that I kind of want this thing to be. Unfortunately, I don't have any tape or anything tonight. It did not work out. And I apologize about the lighting that's going to continue happening. Um, so I'm going to do my best to stand as still as possible. Very good chance that does not work. <laughs> but just coming in here real quick, this definitely will not be the 20 whatever minute show that it was last weekend. Real short and simple. Keys to the game, score prediction, which believe it or not, I've still yet to have a final score prediction yet. So I'm going to do that at the end of this. <laughs> Because hopefully by then I will have convinced myself either way, one way or the other. What I will go ahead and admit right off the bat is I genuinely thought preseason before North Carolina even happened that Georgia and Tennessee were just, for lack of a better term or lack of better words, automatic losses. Was that fair for me to assume? Absolutely not. And I think it has proven now we can't assume those things under Beamer, um, which I don't know if y'all as fans may have noticed or not. Beamer has this way of finding ways to just pull off the impossible, like he has done several times already. So there are avenues for both teams to win this game. I just haven't figured out which one's more likely yet. So that's what we're going to do at the end with the score predictions. So we're kind of just going to dive right into the keys to the game. But first, before we do, there is a quote-unquote sponsor for this show. More of a shameless plug, if you will, for right now at this particular moment. And in the future, whenever we do have more sponsors, we will love that or would love that for the show. But for now, all Carolina fans that are looking to have any kind of real estate need taken care of, whether that's fair, square footage verification, get your home appraised, whether you want to buy or sell a house, only one team to do it. That's the Palmetto Success Team. Yours truly happens to work with them. But you do not have to call me. You can call Frankie Griffin uh, for all those needs as well. That is the sponsor of this show. Any real estate you need, hit up Palmetto Success Team. Without further ado, we get into it. So let's talk about these keys to success, right? And I already said that there are different avenues of how Tennessee or Carolina can win this game tomorrow. And obviously, you're not here to hear how Tennessee can win those games. You're here to hear, or you might be here, to hear why I think or the way for Carolina to win this game. And it all starts off with this, and it's easier said than done, but it starts off with stopping the run. And when I say stop the run, I don't think you have to even remotely do – let me take the, let me take that word remotely back. I do not think you have to do as well as you did against Mississippi State holding 32 yards. If you can hold Tennessee to 32 yards, I think you are sitting in a very, very good spot. Because that means you're having to force Joe Milton to beat you. Which I've kind of, and I'm not saying this now because of the quote-unquote season struggles he's had thus far. But you cannot ignore the fact that he has had issues with deep ball accuracy. And something else I've noticed watching the tape here this week, they rely on these short behind-the-line-of-scrimmage passes a lot more than they did previous seasons or the previous season under Henry Hooker. Now, I'll let you be the judge of why that may be the case. You can speculate speculate that any way you would like to. However, there has been clear issues that Joe Milton has struggled with the deep ball. Not all, not all has been on him. This offensive line for Tennessee has not been, I don't think, as good as they were expecting with injuries, of course. But every team in college football is going through injuries, it seems like, right now. And Joe Milton's had a couple of drops here or there, but he's missed a lot of the time. So if 
you can limit the run, stop the run for Tennessee, which has been the key to success. If you look at the games that they've played that were either close or or losses, the two losses I point out are Georgia of, from last season and Florida this season. They had abs- pretty much no run game to speak of. And even with Pitt, now they wanted to beat Pitt in overtime, but Pitt slowed them down in the running game as well. If you're able to stop their run, that's kind of what their offense predic- is predicated on, it is the run game. Without the run game, I'm not going to call it a gimmick offense, but if you make them one-dimensional, a whole lot easier to stop because they pride themselves on being able to run the ball. And if they can't run the ball, <coughs> excuse me, things kind of get a little shaky. Or at least the the numbers and the film show that at least. So that's number one. You got to stop the run. Number two, which I think will be not the most important. I think we all know the most important one. So we'll just go ahead and get this out of the way. South Carolina's offensive line. You got to protect Spencer Rattler. His jersey has got to be as clean as possible. And not because the numbers for Tennessee, they have high sack numbers. I believe they're tied for second in the nation with 16 sacks. It's not because of that. They have been able to get after the quarterback effectively. You have to give them that. And you have to, that has to be a cause for concern with how the offensive line has performed, but they've improved. And if you haven't seen that, the numbers will even suggest it. Watching the film from week one to week four, from for myself, I've seen vast improvement. Now, a lot of that has come with putting new pieces in, and it has worked. And I still think you're getting healthy on that offensive line. And I think when you get fully healthy on that offensive line, hopefully sooner rather than later, and hopefully you can win this game, get out of it with get get out of this game with a win, and head into the bye week to get that breather and hopefully get some more of your pieces back, especially on that offensive line. However, it's got to be the most important thing. The reason being is this. We did a By the Numbers article. If you hadn't read it, please go read it. I would like to think you would enjoy it. The biggest thing that I noticed is while Tennessee has held quarterback or held the opposing team's passing game to 190 yards per game, the QBR rating or the QBR efficiency for each quarterback has been about 123, which means they're not really forcing a lot of turnovers. They're not forcing a lot of big plays. Now, you have to look at that number and say, well, they they only give up 17, and I think I believe it's 17 and a half points per game. However, you I caution you with that because who they've played. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that a team cannot get better from week one to week four. Obviously, you've seen that in South Carolina. However, I do think there is a vast difference from playing teams such as Georgia and North Carolina compared to playing Virginia and Austin Peay. Now, the one team they played that was, which I still don't know really how to feel about Florida, (laughs) I, I still don't know yet at all. I'm very anxious to watch that game this weekend against Kentucky. But the one team that they played that had somewhat of a pulse, especially on defense, they got smacked. And they got smacked pretty good. Outside of the early success that they had, I was kind of it. So it quite, it kind of makes you question, hey, what exactly – Will they be able to do, if anything, against the quarterback that I don't think they face a quarterback as good as Spencer Rattler is? Um, I've been on this train ever since week one. I think Spencer Rattler is one of the top five quarterbacks in the nation, not just the SEC. However, a lot of people want to tie how good a quarterback is to their record. Fine, so be it. But a lot of people also like to watch the box sheet or the the stats and just determine how – players are based on that alone, which you can't do. Spencer Rattler has done an extremely good job of not putting the ball in dangerous areas, point blank, which Tennessee has not forced quarterbacks to put the ball in dangerous areas. So 
when you sit back and you look at it and see the bigger picture of, well, if this offensive line can give Spencer Rattler time, with the other numbers of their secondary not rest necessarily forcing turnovers and with Spencer not really making those kind of mistakes, if Spencer Rattler has any time back there Saturday night, it could be a long night. Now, that kind of leads into my third topic here and my third key to success. So you obviously know we got to stop the run uh, if you're the front seven um, for this South Carolina. Because, and let me, and let me explain why I mean front seven. If you have to have run support from your safety to stop the run, that is not necessarily the best of things. If you're able to stop or at least limit the run with what you've got and not have to add into the box, it helps you out tremendously, especially after the game we kind of saw with the secondary against Mississippi State. So if you're able to just limit with what you have in the box and not have to add on, that makes your life easier. That's one. Two, obviously everybody knows it. It's probably going to just be a key to the game every single game for the rest of the year. By default, offensive line has to protect Spencer Rattler. The third thing, and I think this is truly – and can truly be the determining factor in all of it, is time of possession. And a lot of people don't really look at time of possession a lot, and that's fine. It's not Typically, it's not that important of a stat. However, when you look and see that Tennessee's defense is on the field for an average of 37 minutes per game, that's roughly 60% of the time. Their defense, when I, the theirs, I mean the balls, the balls defense is on the field for 60% of the time. If you add that with sustained drives, now what do I mean by sustained drives? I mean 8, 9, 10, maybe even 11, maybe even 12. Heck, if you could throw a 16-play drive in like you did against Mississippi State, that's by far the best defense against this team. And I know that might sound weird to some, but if you're able to get Tennessee in a three and out situation and you can sustain drives just like that, you could have them in a big hole. Now, because of how explosive Tennessee's offense is, they're very capable of coming back from 14 nothing. However, if you're able to stop the run, you're able to get pressure on Joe Milton, it's a whole lot harder to come back from 14-0. What it, what's definitely going to be harder, and something that I wish I was prepared for this and I don't have any of my stats here with me, was to see how many drives or how many plays were in all the drives against Florida. If you have three, and we'll just throw out three, three drives, Back to back to back. Let's say they go eight plays, 10 plays, and like a 12-play drive. Taking roughly anywhere between four to six minutes apiece. If you can do that, you will, and assuming that you score on those drives, not always settling for field goals, but definitely not always having to punt the ball. If you can have three of those drives and, heck, even come up with 13 hopefully at, at minimum 17 points and at maximum obviously 21 points. If you can score anywhere between 13 to 21 points in that range and you have taken off anywhere from half of the half or more than that, that's what, 6, 12, 18, 20, about 20-ish minutes, all you've done is destroyed the will of this Tennessee defense and you can continue to relentlessly move the ball. Now, you do have to have that healthy balance of explosiveness. It's always good to have that one 75-yard touchdown. However, that also feeds into what Tennessee wants to do, and that's get their offense on the field. So I think if South Carolina can somehow limit this to a seven, eight possessions each in this game, I think that favors South Carolina. Because I think, or at least they have shown more success of sustaining drives. So that's kind of my three keys right there, quick as day. Offensive line's got to protect. You've got to stop Tennessee's run. 
to force Milton to beat you and sustain drives. Explosives are great, and you need to have one or two, maybe even three. But what you need more than that are three, four, possibly even five of these sustained drives that beat down the clock, that beat down that defense, that end and points. And with that being said, that's why I have a final score of 31-24 in favor of South Carolina. I just trust currently South Carolina's front seven to limit the run for Tennessee more than I do Joe Milton beating you up and down the field regardless of what happened in that Mississippi State game. I think Clayton White gets a lot of things fixed, and I think a lot of people are looking too strongly at that game. You do have to look and and have concern for almost being thrown 500 yards and get you, I, I think was the number, it was like 470, 480. You have to have concern there. However, I think that gets fixed, and I think you see it get fixed relatively quickly. So that's kind of where we're at. That's where I'm at. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, we try to get you out of these quickly. Unfortunately, I do not have any clips to show you. I apologize about that. But just know, if you stop Tennessee from running the ball, you give yourself a great chance. I hope that makes some of you feel any better about tomorrow. Other than that, I will... See y'all Monday. Have a good one.